Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and my wife came home and she noticed that the Yukon was making a lot more noise than usual from the fan. So you can hear it here. And so the fan was in an overdrive situation. It was pumping out harder than it ever has. And what I noticed was that the temperature gauge was reading zero. She, you know, it looks like 160 because that's where it starts, but it was actually at zero. When you hit the transmission uh, temperature gauge by hitting tow haul, you can see it's up to temperature. So the car knows something is wrong. And so it'll give you a check engine light and it will even continue to run this fan in a limp mode kind of fashion, just in case the car's overheating. So it basically knows its temperature sensor has failed and it will run this fan at high blast even when you turn the car off. So as you can see here, we turned it off and they continued to run. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna go ahead and replace the temperature sensor for the coolant. Uh, I did verify it wasn't overheating or any other problems here, um, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace the temperature sensor. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take our 10 millimeter socket here with an extension. And so first what we wanna do is disconnect the battery since it's running and we wanna do the repair without the battery connected anyway. So we're gonna go after the ground cable. Make sure you don't do the positive one. We're gonna go ahead and take our 10 millimeter here, loosen up the uh, negative battery terminal, and we're gonna lift it up and put it out of the way. So that'll turn the fans off and we can start working now. I went with the GM factory temperature sensor and I'll put links in the video descriptions where you can find these. And as you can see, this one already has the Teflon on it. Uh, so um, otherwise we're gonna have to put Teflon tape around the threads if you had a different one. And I'll show you that in the video as well, just in case yours doesn't come with that. Um, but uh, here's some part numbers if you're interested. Now, very important, you need to wait until the car cools down. You do not wanna perform this on a hot engine and uh, it can, scald you with the burning hot coolant and cause all kinds of problems. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do first is disconnect the PCV system here. So when you push up on the bottom of it, you'll see it come up a little bit. Now we can separate it from this uh, air silencer. So we'll just go ahead and pop this one off. And there's also one on the passenger side. And so again, we just push down. In this case, it's inverted. And so uh, once you push down on that tab, you just slide it away. Next, we'll take our common screwdriver and right here near the mass airflow sensor, you're gonna see this little band clamp. So we're just gonna loosen this up. And so as we loosen it up, we'll be able to separate the air intake away from the air box. And so we do this just by uh, moving this around, make sure that it's loose, and then we just uh, pop it and slide it away. Next, we're gonna go to the throttle body area and there's another one of these clamps right here. And so we're gonna go ahead and loosen that up. Now we can take this entire air silencer and just pull it away from the throttle body and it comes out free. Now we're gonna come to our uh, bigger coolant hose here that goes to the radiator and we're gonna loosen the clamp and yours may have the pinch clamp that you'll see later in the video too and the other hoses, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and take a container here and we're gonna remove this hose and we're gonna drain a little bit of our coolant into it. Otherwise, uh, you will have it uh, completely spew out of the thermostat and the uh, coolant temperature sensor area. And so um, we're gonna catch what comes out of the radiator, do a little bit here. Now, we don't wanna siphon it or we'll just keep filling this bottle. And we just want the level to drop a little bit. So once we get it down just a little bit, uh, hopefully where the level's a little bit lower, and so now this is our temperature sensor here. And so we're gonna go ahead and remove it. So what we wanna do is come into this little clamp here on the thermostat hose. We just wanna pinch it and move it out of the way for a little more access. So we don't have to take it off. We just wanna move it out of the way. So there's our uh, temperature sensor. And so as we come in, you can see this one actually has a locking clip. It's a two-step clip. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna put a little pin in here, a little pick, and as we wedge that clamp over, then we're gonna take a pair of pliers and lift up, and that's gonna free the lock. So again, we're pushing away using a little clip, and then that lock should come up and even out in my case. Now we have our a connector that's exposed and we're just gonna come in here and pinch it right here. And as we pinch it, we can remove it. 
So it's a little tricky on this one. Some of them just have the pinching one without the lock. This one had the lock and then the pinch uh, connector on it. So uh, that's how you remove that one. And next we're gonna take a 19 millimeter socket and we're gonna put it all the way over the plug and take this off. So make sure you have a deep socket. Um, if it's not deep enough, you might need to get a different socket that I did in the end too. This one barely fit over it. So uh, we're just gonna slide this right over the top and get it in there nice. And we're gonna bring in an extension. And like I said, you can see this one was shallow enough that the extension didn't even go all the way into the socket. So I eventually got a, a deeper socket. But we're gonna go ahead and turn this counterclockwise to unscrew it. So this eventually came free, and so you will lose quite a bit of coolant. In this case, the level was already a bit lower for us removing the thermostat already. Um, and so, as you can see, this sensor is pretty dirty, so maybe it just needed to be cleaned, but at this point, I was ready to replace it. So here's the old sensor. This is what it looks like coming out. And so our new sensor looks identical. It's the same part. You can see it already has the Teflon already on the threads. And so I'm gonna show you this Teflon tape is what you would need, especially if you get one of these sensors that doesn't have it already on the threads, you definitely wanna make sure you have some of this. So you just pull it tight and you wrap it around the threads. And as you can see, you'll be able to see the, the threads as, you know, as well through it, but this will help it seal. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this down in here. Now remember, we're putting this into aluminum, so it's a very soft metal. So just make sure that it's threading in by hand very well before you put a socket on it. So this one, uh, I felt like it was going in nice and straight, and you'll notice the first threads didn't have Teflon on it so that they would thread straight, then the Teflon is on there. So now that uh, it's started and it's going right, we're gonna go ahead and snug this one down. And so we got this one uh, pretty tight here. Just make sure you don't go too tight and crack anything. We're gonna go ahead and go a little bit more with it here. And it has that uh, copper washer on it as well. So uh, now we can look at it installed and we can see that that copper washer looks nice and snug. There's no wiggling and it's all on properly. Next, we're gonna bring in our clip, plug that back in. We're gonna bring in our lock and it just slides back on the top. Now we'll bring our clamp back down, and that was just for the hose on the thermostat. So that's lined up back where it should be. Make sure that it's not hitting the plug and breaking anything. Everything looks good. We have plenty of clearance here. Now we're gonna add coolant. So this is the Dex Cool, and you wanna pay attention. This one happens to be a concentrate, so we must add water. So we'll add distilled water in here a 50-50 mix. So we're gonna go ahead and take off our expansion degasser tank lid here and we're gonna fill it up first. And then we're gonna come over to our radiator hose. So what we wanna do is hold this hose up and as we pour coolant into it, it will help burp the system. And so eventually you're gonna see that the coolant level will be up in the hose. The coolant may even start to come out a little bit of the radiator and our degasser uh, tank over here too, we wanna fill up too. And so once you're filling in all three of these places uh, without inducing any more air into the system, th we'll go ahead and just slide this hose back onto the radiator. So you might lose a little bit that way, but uh, that's the best way uh, that I've found to get all the air out of the system. And then uh, just make sure that uh, the degassing uh, tank over here is full as well. So everything looks good here. We're gonna go ahead and tighten our radiator hose back down. I'm gonna come over and just make sure that everything looks good on our clamps. Make sure we don't have any leaks at this point and the system isn't pressurized yet, but uh, we would definitely wanna make sure there's no leaks at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, the air silencer back in place here. And we're gonna connect the air box and then we're just using our common screwdriver to tighten down the throttle body clamp. We're gonna tighten down the air intake side as well. And now we're gonna just click our PCV valves back on.
and now we're ready to connect our battery. So we're taking the negative battery cable here. We're going to put it onto the battery post. And with our 10 millimeter, we're going to tighten this back down. I like to twist the cable so I have a good shot on it and it's nice and straight. Now we'll go ahead and start the vehicle. Now that it's running, we're going to look for any leaks. So everything is looking great. Instead of showing zero, we're starting to get a temperature reading here. We want to turn the heater on full blast. This is going to help burp any air out of the system because you do have a uh, hot coolant that's going to go through the heater core. And if there's any air in the system, it might be trapped there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, run it this way. And everything's looking good. Even when we turn on our transmission temperature, we have a reading there. I have another video that shows how to fix the temperature sensor for the transmission. That was another common one if you get code P0711. And so anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please check the video description where I'll put all the videos that I've made on this Yukon. If you're new to the channel, please feel free to subscribe. And so just keep an eye on that coolant level now as you're driving around. Make sure that uh, if it's gone down a little bit that you'll add to it. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks, guys.